the parasympathetic activity during uh, deep sleep, you know, slow wave sleep, stage two sleep and waking. And what you can see in young adults is that you see this really big restore activity during slow wave sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've correlated with is, is that that um, combination of high slow wave sleep and high parasympathetic restore activity with all of these brain cleaning, you know, perception, memory, creativity, working memory, executive function, these are all related to having this combination of high restore activity during slow waves. If you look at the older adults in the lab, when they came, this is older than 65, they don't show any increases in their restore activity during slow wave sleep. And their slow wave sleep is almost unrecognizable in mm -hmm. terms of being slow wave sleep. Like we have these really big amplitude slow waves and really big restore activity during when we're younger. And then as we get older, you just see these, the amplitude of the slow waves become much, much smaller and virtually no restore activity during slow wave sleep in older adults. And so, you know, what I think is going on is this is, this is, a, this is a signature of aging, mm -hmm. right? Is, is that you're losing these vital functions of restore, of downstate functions as you get older by, but it, but as I said, it's happening in our forties and fifties. It's not just something that happens, you know, in our seventies. Right. It it's, starts much earlier. It starts much earlier. And I think that, um, myself included, how we felt about this is sort of like a, it's a natural history, right? It's like you just develop sleep problems as you age, your autonomic nervous system just degenerates like your brain does as you age. It's just a natural history. It's just going to happen. But you're saying, you know, if you're a little bit more active and, or rather proactive in your 40s and 50s, potentially you can be part of that you know, lighter blue group than this darker blue group. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing about, you know, I think that sleep science is always focused on the night and what we're doing in our bedroom. But what the whole conversation we've been having has been about yeah. the daytime. And, and, the, and the contribution of this book to this argument is saying it's not, you know, sleep doesn't just happen when you try to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It starts the second you wake up. Mm -hmm. You're, you're actually setting yourself up to get good slow waves and get good restore activity at night. But if you keep yourself in a high stress state and you don't take a break, you know, mm -hmm. calm yourself down, do some deep breathing, go into nature, you know, get close to a tree every now and again, right. like get out of the traffic and just, you know, be, be with friends, you know, have like intimate relationships where you feel that kind of protected, nice, safe feeling. Mm -hmm. All these things help us during the day to get to the point where at night we're not these super stressed right. out tense people. Right. We're actually relaxed and we can set ourselves up to get into a deep sleep. Yeah. 